Hi everyone, this is Michael for Spirit Comics. Welcome to my channel. This will be my review of Detective Comics 1000. Came out in May of 2019. If you're new here, please do subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Also, please do give this video a thumbs up and share it around. Don't forget to comment and thank you to those who have recently subscribed to my channel and those who do comment because you are very encouraging. Now when this came out, I only got these two because out of all the different covers, these were the only ones I liked. I can't remember uh, which one... Uh, switch but these are from like the 50s and 60s I think they're very nice however I cannot say the same for this the stories inside now the first one is called Batman's longest case it's written by Scott Snyder of all people Greg Capullo is on pencils. Now, if you have ever read anything from Scott Snyder, like uh, DC Metal or uh, Justice League No Justice, you know that Scott Snyder has a habit of putting Batman into these weird situations where he's out in space or he's dealing with something mystical I, or even Dan Didio had people writing him that way this is no different also it's this is a the formatting of this first story is very strange because it go I thought I thought it went from, you know, top to bottom. In this particular story, it goes from top... I mean, I'm just talking on, the, on this these two pages alone. It goes from here all the way over here. And then back here all the way over here down here and all the way over here I think that's a strange format but anyway this is a very odd story that leads him to some mystical uh, detective's cavern that only Hawkman, Hawkgirl, John Jones uh, Detective Chimp, The Question, and I don't know who these are. But, this person right here is somebody, uh, is, Slam, is Slam Bradley, who was a mainstay of Detective Comics until Batman was the main focus of Detective Comics. That was issue 38. And this looks like it could lead into something, but hopefully it doesn't. This next story, it's so-so. This guy is wanting to get his hands on a particular gun. And it's the gun that killed Thomas and Martha Wayne. Now this owner is asking a thousand dollars for it. And this man gives him fourteen hundred. That man is actually Bruce Wayne in disguise. 
Alfred says, you know, it's strange you having this in your collection. He says, I'm not going to have it in my collection. He's melting it down so it can be used for something else. This is written by Kevin Smith. I don't know who he is. Now this next one is a is a little bit uh, funny, you could say. Harley Quinn, the Mad Hatter, Penguin, Riddler, Poison Ivy are all given are being que questioned about somebody. Now, these four, the Mad Hatter, Penguin, Riddler, Poison Ivy, are all in the, either lockup or at their places of business. Harley Quinn, she's still free. This one is called Legend, The Legend of Nut Brody. Each of these people, Harley Quinn, and it's written by Paul Dini, the Mad Hatter, Riddler, Poison Ivy, all tell how they interacted with this Nut Brody. Mm, for some reason, that Nut Brody never even existed. It was these four. So it was a it was a strange story, but a little bit funny. Now this next one, it's called the Batman's Design. This this one's by Warren Ellis. It's a very quick story, a very quick read. These people here, they are not identified. They are taken out by Batman fairly quick. And then there's a big explosion at the end. Very nice colors though. I do I do like the colors. And at the end, he asked the criminal, look at me. I'm already dead. Look at me. I'm trapped in this place. And all I do is haunt the living. Is that what you want for yourself? No. And so he gets him out of there. Now this one is written by Denny O'Neill. You know, I'm a bit disappointed that the the overall color scheme in most of these stories seem to be dark. But, you know, I know people are going to say, well, he is the Dark Knight. Well, he wasn't the Dark Knight in the 1980s. And this is Leslie Tompkins. Now, it's interesting how people draw her. Sometimes they draw her as fair, as fairly young, like in her 30s or 40s. Here, she's much older. Bruce, no! And then it says up here, uh, 35 minutes earlier. So, it's these thugs getting ready to Go out, go out and rob people. Leslie is talking to Bruce, telling him that she doesn't like the way that being Batman has changed him, and in fact that he's decided to take on the persona of Batman in his own life, in the way he makes his own decisions. And some of these stories, they just seem like they're you know, hating on Batman, you know, I, 
but you know most of them are okay stories so Leslie Tompkins is there in Crime Alley because it's I guess the anniversary of the death and the murder of Martha and Thomas Wayne and he takes out these young punks and that's why Leslie Tompkins yells Bruce no because she doesn't want him to kill these punks you know the, the, the way that, that, that most of these stories paint Batman is like you know the worst villain ever this is you know, so far we're not seeing the iconic Batman now this story is be it is is better because it actually starts and then there's a it has a beginning there's a middle and there's an end this is a it says years ago this is written by Christopher Priest who is a fairly good artist I mean a fairly a fairly good writer something to note about Christopher Priest if you don't know when he writes a story he writes them in the format of like act one act two act three act four act five that's the way I that's the way it seems to me because it, it starts off with blame okay so this is Bruce Wayne in a place called La he La Lahasa, L H A S A. Correct me if I said that wrong. You now people are coming at him, you know, beating him up because he's an American. And they take his money. And then it says Gotham. Now and the story begins. And this guy has an old Wayne Foundation card on him for some reason. Batman disappears. Then the next act begins. Let's see. Yeah, I believe this is the, the next act, Honor. And that was actually Dick Grayson in the Batman suit in the, a page back. And then the next act begins, Antibiotics. This is Batman going up against Ra's al Ghul, trying to find out who the person was that, uh, you know, that, di that, that died. And he said, actually, it's, a, you know, your fault. And he said, what, my fault? And thank goodness the editor actually put this in here where uh, Raish says your thirst for re revenge led you to many places on earth but none so instrumental as the temple where you sought out the sensei and the league of assassins there's an asterisk next to the word assassins and here in orange in uh, yellow it says Batman volume one number four hundred uh, four hundred thirty one that was done by the editor that is not done very often anymore when somebody says something like oh you were here you know so long ago Marvel used to do that, but they don't do it very much anymore. So Batman says, you know, point me to the person who did this. So he goes back to, um, this is the next act. La Hissa, again, you know, this is years later. And he's, wa he's talking to the sister of the boy who died. And she, and... He, he finds out why he died. That's a very in interesting reason. Now this one 
this story is set years in the future and I hate to admit this and if uh, and my uh, local comic shop owner John Horse he'll laugh when he sees this because I cannot stand the writing of Brian Michael Bendis but he's the one who wrote this story this short Batman story and he actually did a good job the sto it's set years in the future when Bruce Wayne is old and his hair is all white Os Oswald Cobblepot the penguin comes to him and says that he figured out that Bruce Wayne was the Batman and he proceeds to tell him how he did that and it's really in it. it's really in it. it's a really in intriguing story Bendis is one of those writers that you know, is just like Tom King you know it's hit or miss so and it has a really good ending now this gave me hope a story called the last crime in Gotham by Jeff Johns I thought okay the artwork looks to be the best that the, that's ever that, the, that I've seen yet in the in this book and they have somebody in here by the name of Echo, right there. I have no idea who that is. I thought at first it might have been Batgirl, but no, it's a uh, it. The, it's set years in the future because this is Damien, and he looks much older. This is Catwoman, although she looks much older too. And even Batman looks a you know, kind of a bit older. But I would love to know who Echo is. So, they, they go to this party, you know, this place where everyone's dressed in these uh, decorative hol holiday or birthday type hats. They're all dead, of course. And he asks each one of them who they think the culprit is. Now, I'm not going to... I'm keeping my hand here because I don't want to give the culprit away. And even I thought... I, even I've never heard of this person. So... I found this to be really in intriguing that he would be so short from Jeff Johns. It was a, it was a, it was a good short story. Now this one is called The Precedent, written by James Tinian the Fourth, who wrote Detective Comics when uh, it was relaunched during when, when, when Rebirth came back and most of the time I thought the stories were okay this story you know it's the best detective comic story I have ever seen him write it dwarfs everything he writ that he wrote when he was on detective comics And it's uh, it's set in the set in the present. At first, I thought it was about Dick Grayson, but Damien is mentioned. And it has a really nice conclusion right there. Now. This one is not surprising. This is written by Tom King, who 
I think has some issues because who else would start off a story that's late at night, it's raining, it's dark, depressing. However, as I've said, Tom King is a hit or miss writer. It seems that all of the Bat family are gathered together on this roof. Dick, Dick Grayson, Damian Wayne, Jason Todd, uh, Duke, I forgot his last name, Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, Barbara Gordon, uh, Cat, 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 Kate Kane and Catherine Kane. Now, I don't know what the Huntress is doing here. Helena. Because I know that Helena is the daughter of Catwoman and Batman in Earth 2. Then there's Cassandra Kane. Here's Alfred and Catwoman. Now, they're all talking amongst themselves about why they're there. Why they are there. And finally, he shows up. He doesn't say much of anything. Bat, meaning Batman. I do love the way Barbara Gordon is drawn. It's so beautiful. And it's for an anniversary photo. So we've got here Batwoman, Jason Todd, Batgirl, Nightwing, Alfred, Batman, Robin, Damian Wayne, Duke Thomas, who was never ever given a, a code name, Catwoman, Robin, Tim Drake, uh, St Stephanie Brown, a uh, spoiler now, uh, Huntress, Cassandra Kane, oh yeah, and uh, Ace down there, the Bat Hound. That's a beautiful two-page two spread right there. I was really surprised to see this in Tom King's story. Now, in the ne next uh, three pages are artwork. Yeah, they're, uh, they're okay. Well, actually, four pages. Now, this last one... I was really surprised because it's written by Peter J. Tomasi. It's written and it's written but in a way that this character, the person who is speaking throughout this whole short story, and I'm not going to read a bit of dialogue, I'm just going to show you the pages. This person who's talking for some reason, hates Batman. And the end of the story says something that I had not expected of the writer. To be continued in Detective Comics 101. Medieval. Written by Peter J. Tomasi. I had not expected that of Peter J. Tomasi because of what Brian Michael Bendis did in Action Comics 1000. He used that as a platform to start his own uh, his, his own run, his, his, re his reboot, I think it was, of Man of Steel, or was it, or was it, or was it Action Comics? I can't remember. That was 2018. However, there is a difference between Brian Michael Bendis and Peter J. Tomasi. Bendis did not pay 
homage to Superman in Action Comics 1000. Peter J. Tomasi, I believe, did pay homage to Batman in Detective Comics 1000. Because he showed what Batman has always been about through the ages. As you can see there, he's in the black suit with the black bat on his chest. There, here he's in the blue suit. And it's a, and it's an engage, it's an engaging story. Because you don't know who this is until you get to the last page. And I'm not going to tell you, because, well, I would like you to go out and get the, get issue 1000 for yourself, because it has some good stories in here. It has some not so good stories, especially the one by Scott Snyder. But overall, I would give it, um... Well, I can't put a number on it, and I won't. I won't put a number on it. It was, it was a good read. I'm glad that I have it. It's interesting to see how different people pay respect to Detective Comics. There are some things that I would would have done differently, but that's just me. Overall, it was enjoyable. The artwork was spectacular. Even when it was dark and gritty. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you own a copy of Issue 1000. So, thank you for coming by, ladies and gentlemen. If you're new here, please do subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't miss miss any new uploads also please do give this video a thumbs up and share it around and don't forget to comment till next time true readers i am michael for spirit comics